you can be at home in the fellowship of the Heavenly Father who loves you as you learn the secret of the easy yoke to effortlessly do what Jesus would do if Jesus was you, if he was in your place, by arranging your life, as I arrange my life, around those activities and rhythms that Jesus himself practiced to be constantly at home with and receiving power from his Heavenly Father. And we're learning about arranging our lives in that way. This involves what Dallas would call the golden triangle of spiritual formation, um, the activity of the Holy Spirit on my mind and heart and my thoughts that's going on all the time, and then the experiences of daily life, particularly trials when they come to embrace them. God, how are you at work in this? How can you and I walk through this together? How can I grow through this? But then there are certain practices that we engage in. They are sometimes called disciplines. I know you may not like that word. Who likes that word? Um, they are not things that I do to get my spiritual life in order or to earn brownie points with God. They're not necessarily at all unpleasant things. There are things that I do in order to receive power, to be able to do what I'm not now able to do by direct effort. And today is one of the really important ones, at least for me. It's something that you might not have thought about before much as a spiritual discipline. It is what Dallas Willard calls the discipline, the practice of secrecy. What is that? He writes, in the practice of secrecy, here again, the word is not perfectly suited to our purposes. We abstain from causing our good deeds and qualities to be known. What we're abstaining from here is refraining from making sure people know what a good boy I am and what impressive things that I have done. We may even take steps to prevent them from being known if it doesn't involve deceit. To help us lose or tame the hunger for fame, justification, or just the mere attention of others. Look at me, look at me. Uh, we will often need the help of grace. But as we practice this discipline, we learn to love to be unknown. Now for me, that phrase is a attention getter. Love to be unknown and even to accept misunderstanding without the loss of our peace, joy, or purpose. Few things are more important in stabilizing our walk of faith than this discipline. In the practice of secrecy, we experience a continuing relationship with God independent of the opinions of others. That's why there is great freedom in this, as is always the case of spiritual disciplines. And then Dallas Willard gives a quote, and it's from Thomas Akempis, written a long time ago, so the language is quite archaic, but it is so rich, I want to read it and invite you to just dwell in the words. Thou art not the holier, Akempis wrote, though thou be praised, nor the more vile, though thou be blamed or dispraised. What thou art, thou art. What thou art, that what you are, you are. And that God knows you to be. And you can be said to be no greater. For a man ever to do well and to think little of himself is a token of a meek soul. For a man not to wish to be comforted by any creature is a token of great purity and inward trust. He that seeketh no outward witness for himself. How great am I? Tell me. He who doesn't do that, it appears openly that he has committed himself all wholly to God. Now, why would I engage in this practice of secrecy? Well, I do it to be free, in particular from approval addiction. I do it to be free of the need for impression management, to make sure that I am in control of how you look at me and what you think about me. Uh, I don't know if you know about the Enneagram. I am what's called a three on the Enneagram, and that's the kind of person who wants to achieve and wants to accomplish. And there can be real good parts to that, but when it's unhealthy, then I live for the empty shell of the image that I convey to you. And I'm constantly thinking with them, when I'm with people, what are they thinking of me? Am I impressing them? Right now, I'm talking to you as I look through this lens, but in our little cabana, I'm very aware of the fact that my friend Tim is right over there. 
And what's he thinking about this? How does he think about how it's going? How do you think about how it's going? I would flip that switch off if I could. I speak to people. Part of what I've done for many years is to preach. And part of what I always wrestle with is, how do people think that this is going? And if I could make myself not think that or feel that, I would do it, but I can't. That's why these spiritual practices involve what's sometimes called the principle of indirection. I cannot make myself free of approval addiction, but I can engage in a practice that can help me grow towards that freedom. And here, that practice is secrecy. Now, Jesus talks about that in the sixth chapter of Matthew, the great Sermon on the Mount. The examples that he uses, they're just illustrative, are when you pray and when you give and when you fast. Back in his day, people could really impress others because they were deeply committed to spiritual life and the practice of faith in Israel. So those were attention boosters in our day. It might be more around athletic accomplishments or vocation or finances or so. What Jesus says at the very beginning is, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before people to be seen by them. Now, that's that desire to live for the idol of impression management. And he says, if you do that, here's an idea. Do some really good stuff and don't let people know about it. Keep it a secret. So when you pray, instead of blowing it, uh, uh, instead of letting everybody know about it, telling everybody, but when you give, instead of blowing a trumpet, and literally in his day, Folks who gave would sometimes send people in front of them to blow trumpets to advertise. We'll have other ways of advertising our giving. Or when you fast, he says, just do it in secret. Now, that's not a law. In the Old Testament, David one time uh, leads the people by giving for the building of a temple. And he lets everybody know about it. They all celebrate. He is not contradicting what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, if you struggle with the need to impress other people, here's a useful practice. Sometimes do something good and don't make sure everybody knows about it. This is so fascinating. As he describes how this works, he says, because if you do something and then you make sure other people find out about it, truly I tell you, you have your reward. What is your reward? Well, your reward is this. I used to think when he said that, that, you know, God had a gold star he was going to give you, but if somebody else sees you, God pulls it back. It's not that. It's intrinsic to the way that we live and the way that character formation takes place. And this is part of spiritual reality, life in the kingdom. The reward that comes when I do a good thing in secret is freedom. I am a little bit less enslaved to what you think about me. And I can be present with you in confidence and joy and well-being and love you because I am free. Now, if when I'm with you, I make sure that I let you know what I've done to impress you, then I lose that reward. I lose that freedom. And even though I might get you to do this, I become a little bit more addicted to this. And that's a miserable way in which to live. Take it from me, I know. So um, how do we go about practicing secrecy? Well, here's a wonderful uh, possibility that Dallas gives. If you want to experience the flow of love as never before, the next time you are in a competitive situation, maybe at work or at school, pray that the others around you will be more outstanding, more praised, more used of God than yourself. Really pull for them and rejoice for their successes. Is this hurting a little bit yet? If Christians were universally to do this for each other, the earth would soon be filled with the knowledge of God's glory. The discipline of secrecy can lead us into this sort of wonderful experience. And this is one that I have had to practice a lot just because I need it so badly. And I wrestle with the disease of approval addiction so much. So today... Uh, Let the word be anonymity. Do something good and don't let other people know about it. Do somebody a a favor without their finding out that you did it. Um, Maybe you can clean somebody's house. I know somebody that did this and they got in a little trouble for throwing away and rearranging stuff that they weren't supposed to. Um, But uh, it was a great anonymous gift to give. Write somebody a note without letting them know that you are the one that sent it. Give somebody a gift without letting them know that you are the one that gave it. Run an errand for somebody. 
uh, get something for somebody that you know that they will love and just leave it uh, on their doorstep or uh, on their desk without a note saying that you're the one that did it. If you accomplish something, just practice accomplish something and not telling people about it. For me, sometimes this involves the biting of a lip until the blood flows. Well, that's all right. Um, do something well uh, and then don't brag about it. This is the practice of secrecy and it brings great freedom. And if this one isn't for you, we'll have another one tomorrow. Welcome home. Hey, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us here at Become New. We hope that these videos help you to grow spiritually one day at a time. If you want to access our whole library of videos, or if you want to subscribe to the daily emails or text messages that go along with each video, head on over to becomenew.com and you can let us know there. We're also preparing some exclusive leadership content. So if you're interested in that, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash leadership. And lastly, if you've got a prayer request, we would love to pray for you. You can let us know by texting it to 855-888-0444. See you next time.